Hi everybody, it's Rishi Agarwal. In this video, I'm gonna go over five tips for medical students on their radiology rotation. This video is specifically for med students who are interested in going into radiology for their residency. The radiology med student rotation is unique because unlike surgery or medicine where you can round on patients and take histories, there's not a lot that a student can contribute to the process of radiology, so it's hard to make yourself stand out. But we're gonna talk about some ways to help you do that. But first, let me talk about three goals that I think you should have on your rotation. The first is to confirm that radiology is what you want to do. If this is your first exposure to the day-to-day -day life of a radiologist, it's especially important because you may be enticed by the idea of radiology, even though you might not know what it entails. The second goal is to put yourself in the best possible position for a spot in radiology. Every year, a good chunk of medical students end up doing residency in the place where they did their rotation. And so whether that's at your home institution or whether that's an away rotation, you want to leave people with a positive impression of you. The third goal is to learn radiology. And ironically, this is the last goal, because for people who go into radiology, you're gonna have five dedicated years of training. So in this one month of exposure, you're not really gonna learn a lot of radiology. But what is important to learn are the basics of common tests, like what to order when, what tests require contrast, when you don't need contrast, and all the other basics you're gonna need for your internship. Okay, so those are the goals that I'm gonna keep in mind for these five tips. Tip number one is to research the program. Tip number two is talk to the trainees. Number three, be professional and pay attention. Number four, remember a basic differential diagnosis. And then number five, do your follow-up. So let's start with number one, research the program. Before you arrive on your first day, it's important to know who these people are. The program director, the associate program directors, the program coordinator, and the chief residents. The program director is the radiology attending that's in charge of the residency program, kind of like the boss of the residents. The associate program directors are the other attendings who help the program director run the residency. The program coordinator is the administrative person, not a radiologist, who handles many of the day-to-day -day tasks of the residency, including setting up logistics for interview day, organizing data that has to be shared with the ACGME, and sometimes organizing the medical student rotation. At many places, the program coordinator has been there a really long time, sometimes longer than the program director. So be sure to listen to them, be polite, and follow their advice if they say something. All of these people will be intimately involved in the interview and selection process, so you should definitely know who they are. If you happen to work with the PD or APD on your daily rotation, it's important to introduce yourself and let them know that you're applying to radiology. If they know that, they will take a mental note of you and will remember interactions with you compared to all of the other med students who may show up on the rotation. Also, if you tell them you're applying to radiology, they may give you a project they need help with, or they may give you advice on your application or rotation. So if they tell you something, be sure to follow through on it. Finally, if you're interested in doing a research project, find out who's the vice chair for research. You can send them or their assistant an email letting them know that you're interested in radiology, what your skills are, and that you're looking for a project. You may not necessarily start a project with that person, but they will probably be able to help connect you with someone in the department who's looking for a student. Now let's talk about letters of recommendation for a second. You may have the impression that having multiple letters of recommendation from radiologists is ideal, but if the interactions that you've had with those radiologists were only over like two or three days, then it's really not. The best letters of recommendation come from people who know you well and can speak to your strengths. Most letters that I come across say in the very first paragraph who that person is writing the letter and how they know the candidate. So they'll say something like, I'm Joe's preceptor in primary care clinic and have worked with him every month since his first year in medical school. I'm gonna put a lot more weight into that letter compared to one that says, I'm a radiologist and I've worked with Joe for three days on his radiology rotation. Tip number two is to talk to the residents and fellows. Again, I would recommend that you be frank and let them know that you're applying to radiology and that you're interested in the program. Some of the things that you'll wanna know are, what do they like about the program? 
Why did they choose this program over others? And do they have any tips to get into radiology residency? If and when you do go on your interviews, one of the questions that you'll likely be asked during your interview is what specifically do you like about this program? That's when you can say, well, I did my radiology rotation here and I noticed that the radiology residents really liked X, Y, and Z. Or you can say that you spoke with the residents when you did your rotation and they all seemed very happy with the training they're getting. Another tip is to talk to the fellows. The fellows may be coming from different institutions, so they have experience about how other places are run, and they can tell you unique things that they like or don't like about this program that were different from their residency. Okay, so that's tip number two. Tip number three is to act professionally and pay attention. Some of this may seem obvious, but it can be harder than it sounds because you might be sitting in a dark room for hours at a time, and in some cases, nobody is really interacting with you, so it can be difficult to maintain focus. But when you're reading out, put your phone in your pocket and pay attention to what's being said. Maybe have a notepad out to jot down some notes, and don't be afraid to ask some questions. And you can be helpful if you can. Like when I'm reading out and I see something in the history that I don't know about, or there's a medication I haven't heard of before, that's when you can take out your phone and say, let me look that up real quick and give a brief synopsis of what that thing is. And then certainly you want to arrive on time. If you're consistently late, people will remember that and it can overshadow all of the other good things that you've done on the rotation. When it comes to being dismissed for the day, here's the thing. When I'm working with a medical student, readouts definitely take more time compared to when I'm by myself or just with a resident because I'm trying to teach the student and also trying to assess the student. I give them opportunity to take a look at cases. So when the morning is over and it's time to break for conference, if I want the student to go home, I'll let them know, why don't you go study in the afternoon? If an attending is being direct like that, you should take that suggestion of, at face value. It's not some sort of test to know whether or not you're really dedicated. Now, if you get no indication from the attending whether to come in or not, then it's a good idea to come in. Also, if you have other things to do or class in the afternoon, definitely let that person know so they don't think you just took off. And this might just be a pet peeve of mine, but try to stay caffeinated. If you have to yawn, do it quietly. If I hear one more of these overly loud yawns. Okay, let's move on to tip number four, and that's to remember your differentials. On your rotation, you'll probably get asked questions just like any other rotation. I recommend studying during your rotation, and I'll list some resources down in the description, but I'll tell you it's hard for a medical student to know everything. Part of that is because there's so much to know, and one day you're on breast imaging, studying about DCIS and calcifications, and the next day you're on neuro, learning about astrocytomas or something. So I want you to remember a few things. First, if an attending is asking you, the medical student, a question, usually the answer is not going to be some really obscure factoid that only a senior resident or fellow would know. Attendings usually ask medical students questions that are appropriate for their level of training. So if I have a patient's chest x-ray and I ask you to give a diagnosis, don't go off into some rare diagnosis, stick with the basics. The second thing is that if you're in a situation where you're freezing up and the attending is trying to coax a diagnosis out of you, it helps to go back to a general mnemonic that can keep your thoughts organized. You may have heard the mnemonic vindicate, vascular, infection, neoplasm, degenerative, iatrogenic, congenital, autoimmune, trauma, and endocrine. Just going through this mnemonic may help jog your memory to something you may have read. But if you're really stuck, start with these three things, infection, neoplasm, and autoimmune. If you know more about the history and it's relevant, you can also include trauma and iatrogenic. And I wouldn't just say those words, like if someone shows you a lesion in the liver and asks you to give a differential, don't just say infection, neoplasm, autoimmune. And even though you may not know the names of the tumors that show up in the liver, you could say, well, I would think about neoplasms, such as primary tumors of the liver, both benign and malignant, metastatic disease, and lymphoma. I would think about infection, like an abscess, etc. And I guarantee that if you don't know the answer, but if you arrange your differential in this organized way, you're gonna come across much more thoughtful than if you just start spouting off diseases at random. 
My final tip for you is to do your follow-up at the end of your rotation. First, if you didn't get a chance to interact with the program director and you're nearing the end of the rotation, try asking the program coordinator or whoever's in charge of the med student rotation if you can spend a day with the PD on their rotation so you can get some face time. Or if the rotation is over and you still can't meet with them, just send them an email letting them know that you finished your radiology rotation and that you're interested in this program for residency. After you submitted your application, a lot of places will automatically interview everyone from their home institution or people that did an away rotation at that institution. If it's been a couple of weeks already and you don't have an interview invite, send an email to the PD, APD, or other attendings you may have met letting them know that you enjoyed your rotation there and that you're applying to this program. The radiology rotation can be really tough, but if you follow these tips, I guarantee you'll have a better time. Good luck.